Okay, uh, welcome guys. Uh, so uh, this video, uh, let's talk about this uh very strange theorem. Uh, I suggest that uh, uh, I guess that you will not hear this theorem in the complex analysis. But actually, this is the category in the complex analysis called Gauss-Lucas theorem. Okay, so this theorem is so amazing that uh, I never heard about this theorem until I I want to make this video. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's talk about the theorem. So P is a polynomial with complex coefficient, and all zeros of P prime belongs to a convex hole of the set of zeros of P. Okay. Uh, so this theorem says that what? It says that uh, if you have so if you plot the P the zero of P of Z, right? Maybe in a complex plane. So you have maybe let's say x one, x two, x three, x four. Right, x five, right? And then you can create a convex hole. Basically, a convex hole like this, and then if if you calculate p prime of z, right, and the zero of p prime of z, right, let's say the zero of p prime of z is that's called alpha, right, and alpha must fall into this region. So basically, the zeros of the zeros of uh, p of z will make a, a domain, right, basically control the positions of the zero of the derivative. Okay, so this is uh, let's maybe draw some examples. Okay, so maybe uh, one example is very uh, one elementary example is that uh, if you see about uh, the quadratic function, right? If you say about like the y square and y equals x plus b square plus c, right? And then you can see that uh, the the derivative, right? The 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 derivative of this the zero of the derivative always shown in in uh, between of this between of this uh, zero. So basically the zero, the idea is that the polynomial, uh, the, all zeros of P prime. So basically the zero of P prime will be constrained by the zero of P. Okay, so uh, let's talk about more formally. So formally, basically if alpha is a zero of P prime of, of Z, and the X1 X up to Xn is a zero of P of Z, then there is this a beta greater than U to I from I to one to N. Basically, your alpha is the linear combination of the uh, set of zero p z, and this beta i are all greater than zero. And then not only that, you can prove that uh, the beta i are all, I all one. So basically, you can prove that. Uh, so basically, this is the idea of convex hole, right? Basically, this is x one, x two, x three, right? And the convex hole is the and your region, and this region, and the zero will show up in this region. So basically, this is the theorem. So theorems just say that uh, we have uh, we have uh, zeros. Uh, we have uh, these are all zero of p of z, and uh, the you you can always find a uh, positive number, uh, but there is some one and basically alpha constraint. Alpha is basically a linear combination of this. Uh, okay, and so one stupid case is that uh, there is a double root. So basically. Uh, there is a multiple roots of p of z so basically alpha will be one of these right if alpha would be one of these then this is trivial right i can just choose some beta to be one and the rest of zero okay so prove that p of z to be this i from one to n z minus x i so and some constant right but not, not, not that constant is not important okay so p prime divided by p will be this i from one to n z minus x i uh one divided by z minus x i right uh, this is trivial right because we know that we assume that p of z has the zeros of x1 up to xn, so I can write p of z as the product of this, and I can do the derivative. Okay, so the proof is trivial. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, so we have alpha, right, such that p prime alpha is zero, so we get zero equals to i from one to n, one divided by alpha minus xi. Uh, so we get, uh, we can times alpha bar minus x1 bar, so we get alpha bar minus x1 bar, uh, xi bar. Sorry, sorry. Uh, alpha minus x i square uh, i from one to n to be zero. So uh, I take a complex conjugate. I get alpha minus x i alpha minus x i square i from one to n is zero. So uh, we get alpha divided by alpha minus x i square equals x i divided by alpha minus x i square. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have this, right? We have this. At the how about I I let j to be alpha minus x i square. 1 i from 1 n right so i can write alpha is uh i just divide i just call it this j right so alpha is 1 over this j x i right so 
Uh, regardless is uh, summation, right? I just let by beta i to be this. So beta i will be this coefficient. I call this or oh, beta i. Okay, so beta i will be this. So obviously beta i is greater than zero because j is greater than zero and all these coefficients are greater than zero, right? So alpha will be sum of i from one beta i xi. And the rest is just calculate uh, the sum of beta i, right? And the easy calculation show that the uh, sum of beta i is one. Okay, so uh, this is the proof of the this uh, Gauss Lucas theorem. So uh, my feeling is that this Gauss Lucas theorem is basically somehow like there is an algebraic geometry feeling of this kind of theory. So it's it's very amazing that uh, your complex analysis, your easy like idea, your easy idea in complex analysis can prove such strange theory. And this theory has some consequence that uh, we may discuss in the other video. So if you want to see more complex analysis, you can go to my video list and uh, see the complex analysis videos. Okay, I will see you guys in the uh, next videos.